What's up, everyone? It's NFL Week 11, and this is your FanDuel First Look. What's up, guys? Kevin Allen here, aka The Geek from DFS Army, and we're taking a look at NFL Week 11 FanDuel pricing, FanDuel scoring, all the good FanDuel goodies for the main slate. Coming off uh, another really, really great first look video anyway, where we we were all over fields and all over um, Singletary. A couple really good spots that we had gotten on last week. And we're going to see if we can get on some good spots this week. There is one bargain at running back that I think is going to help us. A little sneaky that's going to help us make some lineups this week. So let's get right into it. And of course, before we really dive in to... FanDuel itself, we got to take a look at the game cards and just get a sense of which games stand out this week, which games have players we want to target. And I am using the Sharp app game tiles for the purpose of this video. So make sure if you ever bet on sports, you like betting on sports, you love pro picks, you love winning um, and uh, discord with professional bettors that tip their bets and share strategies and everything, you check out Sharp App, go to sharpapp.com or download the Sharp App on your favorite Android or iOS device. All right, getting into it here. First game on the docket is one of the best games of the week. Chicago at Atlanta, 50 point total. Atlanta, three point home favorites. What? Atlanta's favored? Excuse me? Excuse me? What the hell? Chicago should be favored. What is going on here? Place that bet. Right now, but um, as far as this game goes, 50 point total, you've got two really weak defenses at this point. So uh, this game promises to be a fantasy points bonanza. Real quick glance at our sort of uh, at our points against sheet shows Atlanta very vulnerable, specifically to wide receivers, pass catchers, um, not good against running backs either, certainly allowing uh, more points to the quarterback position. So great, great, great overall matchup for the Bears offense. The wide receivers, my goodness, we really got to target wide receivers again in Atlanta. So, you know, we'll talk about Claypool and Mooney when we're looking through the player pools. And, of course, Chicago, uh, nondescript really, kind of bad against the running back position, though, which very much favors Atlanta's running backs. So this game, it's kind of strength on weakness on both sides here. So I really like that one. Next up, we've got Carolina at Baltimore. Baltimore, 12.5 point favorites. Again, um, interesting spread here but um baltimore probably not going to need to do a whole lot in this one i'm i'm kind of interested in kenyon drake in this game uh baltimore heavy favorite could lean on the run a little bit more probably going to stay away from lamar jackson in a blowout scenario like that cleveland at buffalo 43 point total low total game um josh allen still you know he played last week so he should be fine i guess with the elbow injury Buffalo, a defense we really don't want to screw with with players uh, against, although obviously this past week the Vikings tore them up, but I'm not counting on that happening all the time, especially a team like Cleveland, um, one week away from Deshaun Watson coming back. So uh, I'm probably going to stay away from that game for the most part. Next up, we've got Washington at Houston. Houston known as the worst team at stopping the run in the league right now. Not a very good overall defensive team which is interesting because Washington has a couple of pieces that might be of interest as well. we got to kind of see what the story is with J.D. McKissick. Um, if McKissick was out, I might, you know, let's see if we can get a bargain price on Gibson or Robinson, the running backs for Washington. Might have some interest there. And, of course, on the Houston side, the only real player that's been fantasy relevant for the most part this season is Damian Fierce Pierce. So we'll see about all that as well. Eagles at the Colts. Colts going back to Matt Ryan with Jeff Saturday at the helm. Jeff Saturday laying the smack down on the um, Colts offensive line, telling them to have some self-respect. And they stepped up and played pretty well last week. Um, but this is the Eagles, really tough team defense to uh, target. And the Eagles offense is always good. Jalen Hurts is always going to be just fine. Uh, they lost J Dallas Goddard for a little bit. So, you know, one of A.J. Brown or, or Devonta Smith, certainly one of those guys are interesting here in the spot. Uh, Jets at New England, gross gross 38 and a half point total here new england home three point favorites 
Um, there really isn't a whole lot to like for me about this game. Um, Ramondre Stevenson has been pretty good, but I think Damian Harris will be back, so not super exciting. And then on the Jets, you know, they they got a two-headed running back monster. Jets defense maybe here, Pat's defense. So this is a, team, a, a game I'm going to target some defenses, and that's about it. Um, Rams at the Saints. Saints four-point home favorites in that one. And I'm not sure who the quarterback's going to be for the Saints. They might go to Jameis Winston here, which kind of throws everything for a loop. Uh, I've certainly enjoyed playing Chris Olave, and um, there's certainly bargain pricing available for Jarvis Landry, but you know neither of those guys have been touchdown machines, so probably going to stay away from this one for the most part. On the Rams side, I might have some interest with Cooper Cup going down for the season. Actually, um, I'm not sure if this is this is probably more of a DraftKings play, but I'm a little interested in Van Jefferson, um, maybe a little bit of Allen Robinson. I think they're both viable even on FanDuel in, in this one. Detroit at the Giants. So the Giants get the ultimate, you know, another ultimate sort of dream matchup against the Lions. But the Giants have a hard time putting together passing offense. The Lions are really vulnerable to passing offense. I think Saquon Barkley is somebody we got to keep our eye on. 46 point total in that one. On the Detroit side, not a whole lot to like. Can't really trust their running backs right now. Really, um, not not a, Giants are not a good team to target players against anyway. But really, just can't trust the running back situation for Detroit with Swift. No cute, no injury tag, but not getting any work. They're sort of nervous about overworking him, or I don't know what the problem is, to be quite honest. I have no idea. But um, the only person really in that game that's probably got my eyebrow raised is Amin Ra, because he's always good. He's the man. He's the sun god. Raiders at Denver. Uh, again, Denver, a team not to be trifled with defensively. They are very, very good, particularly against quarterbacks and Wide receivers, which leaves Josh Jacobs running back spot um, as a decent spot against Denver. But this total is pretty low. It's not a sexy game at all. On the on the uh, Denver side, I guess Cortland Sutton, if, if Judy was out, would be of interest a little bit. But not, a, not an exciting game here. What is an exciting game, though, Dallas at Minnesota. Minnesota coming off of that incredible win again, like a... Oh, we did it. We won. You know, that that amazing exhale victory against the Bills. Due for a letdown here in this spot. Dallas actually coming off a disappointing game. So I understand why Dallas is favored by one. And I really like what I saw out of the Dallas offense last week, um, especially CeeDee Lamb. He looked really, really good. So um, I'm really interested, actually, in CeeDee Lamb here. I think this, this game in general has a lot of potential for fireworks. Uh, Justin Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb. And, and Tony Pollard are all of interest. I'm not worried even if Zach, uh, Zeke comes back because I assume that Zeke will come back, but, you know, kind of be gimpy limited a little bit. So I think Pollard will still get the bulk of the work, but we'll have to check and see what his salary looks like. Uh, Bengals at Pittsburgh. You know, Pittsburgh is the ultimate matchup for opposing wide receivers. It's just been really bad at stopping the wide receiver position. So certainly going to have some interest in T. Higgins, uh, a little Joe Burrow interest as well. On the Steelers side, it's really just been... George Pickens, who is stepping up, he's still kind of underpriced on the DFS side. So I'll be interested a little bit in George Pickens. And that'll do it for the main slate. So let's take a look over at FanDuel, at the salary, at the pricing algo, and see what we can figure out here. So um, as, as per usual, Josh Allen, the highest priced quarterback on the slate at 9,200. And I think he's appropriately priced at 9,200. He's probably good for... 25 to 30 fantasy points in this and almost every game uh, that he plays in. Cleveland pretty bad against running backs, and it would make sense for Buffalo to lean on the run, but they're probably not going to do it because they just never do. Jalen Hurts, second highest priced quarterback. And again, you know, it's fine. Fine play on the road at, at the Colts. Um, Hurts definitely runs around enough, and he's just he's just good at football. So I think he's good for you know, 25 to 35 fantasy points in that range, depending on how much of a fight the Colts can put up. And I think they can put up a decent fight here if Matt Ryan comes back and Saturday has that O-line playing as well as they did last week. Now, of course, I am in love with Justin Fields this and every week. He gets the dream matchup against the Falcons. Bonus, great matchup. Um, Justin Fields is doing it and doing it well with his legs right now. 40 points, 40 points, 26, 24. So even if he's just doing the 24s and 26s, 8, 16, 24, that's still getting you 3x. Um, his uh, approximately 19, 20, so we need about 27 to get your 3x, and, and we're targeting 3x salary on FanDuel to land in the nuts lineup. So 
um, <clears throat> that gets you about a one. It puts you on track for about a one eighty, which is about what won tournaments last week. Uh, Scotty's uh, early slate win was a one eighty eight. So you got to be at about three x salary, and I think Hertz and Fields are both very very safe to get you there. Um, Lamar Jackson is probably no for me um, this week, uh, other than you know crazy upside. Every once in a while he does his thing, but no, probably not. Joe Burrow, I think, is playable, but I, I don't like the salary here, so it becomes GPP only. I'm going to actually plug in Justin Fields as my placeholder, but, man, he's a little too scary close to Josh Allen and Price to where I kind of want to go with Josh Allen a little bit, but the matchup is too good. We're going with Fields. I don't want to – I don't. I'm doing it. I don't care. Um, but to mention um, here, Burrow, and let's see if we can find any – so – the only reason to really mess with a different kind of quarterback than these elite ones is if you could save enough salary or GPP crazy upside. Like Joe Burrow every once in a while puts up a 35 or a 40 and, you know, he could be the highest score on our slate. Uh, I don't really see that for Daniel Jones. He'd have to run for a lot because there's just no pass catchers on this Giants team that can threaten. But the matchup is so good. Tough to ignore it. Um, I like Dak at this price, 7,500. A little bit of savings off of fields. And he's very stackable, so I will definitely be looking to make Dak, Lamb, and probably Gallup, like Dak plus two. We've seen in the Week in Review video that it is really sharp to continue stacking QB with two, even on FanDuel, where we traditionally thought it would be better to stack with one. Um, but actually, stacks, double stacks with the quarterback, even this season, has won frequently, so we're going to go right back to that. Mariota, probably not. Um, can he get us there? You know, he had a he's had a 24 a couple times this year at that price, 740, 20. You know, maybe. Not really. Uh, Matt Ryan is a no. Derek Carr is a no. Russell Wilson is a no. Pickett, no. Heineke, probably not. Goff, no. Wilson, no. So we don't really have to mess around down here. It gets worse and worse and worse. So... I'm going to hang with the big dogs this week uh, at the quarterback position, and we'll have to get our savings elsewhere. So let's take a look at the running back group for NFL Week 11. And, and of course, Saquon Barkley in the dream matchup against the Lions. Lions are bleeding points to opposing running backs. and But the only problem is Saquon Barkley's ceiling. It's just like last week he got the even dreamier matchup against Houston, put up 22, which is fine. But realistically, he needed to get closer to 30 to make value. So he was not part of the nuts lineup. He's just more of a good, solid, yeoman-like cash play at this price. He does not seem to have 35, 30 plus point uh, FanDuel upside. So just, you know, buyer beware there. Um, Joe Mixon coming off the big week. Joe Mixon is usually not the, the type of player you want to you wanna buy off of a price hike. He's usually the guy you want to buy into when he's lulled you to sleep. And they aggressively priced him up 9K for this game. So I'm not sure I'm going to be super excited about that one. Jonathan Taylor, big week last week. Tougher matchup here, 8,700. Yeah, all right. Um, Jacobs at Denver, 8,500. Not exciting. Um, Chubb at Buffalo. Could get it done, but again, not something I'm going out of my way to target. Ramondre at the Jets, 8,100. Still a little spendy. Um, as well, uh, with uh, let's see if Damian Snacks Harris returns this week. If he does, that's definitely a negative for Ramondre in my mind. Um, Tony Pollard, yeah, I don't mind Tony, Tony Pollard normally, but 8K again, I'm probably gonna get my exposure over on DraftKings a little bit cheaper over there, relatively speaking. So, you know, here's the thing yeah, I want to play Barkley, I want to play these expensive. Actually, I don't love any of them, I don't love any of them, keeping it real, but of course, we want to play Barkley. but you know, this is a salary cap format, and we have to keep that in mind. We need to target matchups. Um, Damian Pierce here. Now, we didn't play Damian Pierce last week. I thought it was bad chalk, and we were correct, right? We got off of it in tournaments. If you followed, uh, you know, the tournament tactics show and all of that, we laughed at everybody who was making him chalk, and we just, you know, we made fun of them, and rightfully so, right? Because it was a terrible play in the sense of the matchup, right? Um, this matchup's a little bit better uh, against Houston at home. For Damian Pierce, I don't mind Pierce in this spot at all. He gets 20-plus touches almost every game, gets a few targets. Uh, Houston's not a team that scores very frequently, but this game is kind of a game between two mediocre, two bad teams, and I actually think uh, Houston will stay in it. So I'm really keeping him in mind. I, I kind of want to pull the trigger here and pop him in my lineup. 
let's pop in. Let's put a placeholder on Damian Pierce. Um, Kamara, more of a, you know, it's not a very good matchup. This one, this one just doesn't stand out for me. It's not a great matchup. Uh, he's more of a PPR guy, so not super excited there. Miles Sanders, I'm going to take a pass. Um, Donta Foreman, always low owned, always doing well. Another big week, 19, 31, 15 and a half, really good scores. You know, 7, 14, 21. He needs about 21 fantasy points at this salary. So, you know, I'm going to keep him in mind a little bit. Another name I want to keep in mind here is, uh, and, and this is really where I want to live this week, to be honest, uh, in this cheaper zone. So one of the guys is Kenyon Drake. Now, they're saying Gus Edwards might come back for Baltimore, but Kenyon Drake has looked good in the role. Like, he looks like he belongs in the role. Um, 23 carries, two targets last week. He's seen as many as four targets in a game a couple of games ago. He scored really well in all his starts. So I really like Kenyon Drake, and I'm actually going to pop him in here in place of Damian Pierce because I think you're getting similar production for a cheaper price. Uh, of course, I want to mention Cordero Patterson, the dream matchup. He is part of a three or four running back committee on this team, so he cannot be trusted for volume. And the difference between this year and last year for Cordero was last year he was getting targets and he was getting um, passing game work. He is not getting that as well because they just don't throw the ball very frequently in Atlanta. So I'm keeping him in my GPP mix, but I'm not using him for this first look lineup. Um, DeAndre Swift, again, at some point he'll get carries and he'll smash. But, you know, it's it's risky. It's tournament only. So I'm I'm just mentioning him. I'll have him in my player pool again. I'll go right back to it. I love suffering. And I'm glutton for punishment. That's really what it comes down to. Um, Brian Robinson, interesting. 20 plus carries last week. What? That's a lot of touches. 26 carries, uh, 14.6 fantasy points. Now he gets the dream matchup against the Houston run defense. So, yeah, this is another guy we're going to keep in mind. Antonio Gibson as well. As long as JD McKissick is out, both of these Washington running backs have some value on FanDuel. Um, Devin Singletary, again, ideal matchup right? Rarely gets it done, but he got it done last week. Two touchdowns, only got us uh, 15.2 fantasy points, uh, 47 yards, two touchdowns. Listen, he's not getting a lot of ancillary yardage. It's going to be a couple touchdowns. He, he's rarely going to get you 100 yards, but at 6,400, I think he's playable on FanDuel. And the last guy, and this one's going to blow your mind, David Montgomery. Khalil Herbert, IR. Now David Montgomery back to getting all the touches. Let's see what happened last week. He got, now that was a monster game. Detroit, the best matchup ever. He gets nine carries and a target, right? 37 yards. Khalil Herbert comes in the game. What did he do? 10 carries, 57 yards. So now we get to combine it. So yeah, I didn't like David Montgomery when Khalil was there, but Khalil's gone. And so you add these 10 rushing attempts to Montgomery. And now you're talking about, um, 19 touches, almost about 100 yards, a target or two. You know, if he gets in the end zone, you're talking about a 17. 6, 12, 18 is all we need. Montgomery, that's right. I'm putting Montgomery in the first look. Now, you might be like, why would you combine Montgomery and Fields in the same lineup? And to be honest, I don't like the combo. I don't think it's a, cor a positive correlation. But Montgomery stands out as an extreme value running back. I don't need him to get three touchdowns, which in order for Montgomery to negatively affect Fields' outlook, he probably needs two touchdowns, right? If the if the Bears are going to get three or four touchdowns in the game and Montgomery gets two of them, then Fields is only get one. He probably won't do enough to pay off his salary. So I love Montgomery. I need to put him in the lineup, but probably less than ideal with fields, but I'm not going to not do it for this kind of lineup, right? Like maybe when we're building for tournaments and I want, you know, I have 10 different versions to choose from, we can also easily swap out and just pop in Dak or, or, you know, Josh Allen or someone else to make it work. Let's see how much salary we have left over at the end of this build. So next we we've got a couple of cheaper running backs in there. We've got our uh, best quarterback of the week. Um, now let's go and figure out which defense is viable. And I like to use what I call the minimum viable defense, meaning the cheapest defense that I think is acceptable. And right off the bat here, you've got the Raiders. Now the Raiders are not a good defense by any stretch of the imagination, but I think Denver kind of sucks. 
too. So they're a bad offense. So I'm keeping the Raiders in mind here at 3,200. Maybe Pittsburgh at Cincinnati, 3,800 looks okay. Um, you know, the Rams, Washington against Houston. Man, you got to pay a lot once you get past that those first ones. Since he had Pittsburgh, I guess. Um, Dallas, Minnesota, probably not. Buffalo at home. Yeah, Buffalo at home for 4,500 looks interesting. Jets could be could be played here um, for 4,600. Wow, what a price. And I, I'd say one of the better ones is probably Baltimore. But again, you really got to pay up for them. Eagles, fine. New England, fine. So yeah, there's some decent payoff options. But I'm going with what I consider to be the cheapest viable, which is the Raiders on the road, as crazy as it seems. You know, 3,200 will just save the salary and hope that they hope that Russell Wilson cooks us up some uh, turnovers. All right, let's take a look at tight end here this week. And Mark Andrews, shoulder issue. Not sure if he's going to play or not. Um, Dallas Goddard, out. That's a shame. So the player we're going to go with here is Dalton Schultz. I think Dalton Schultz is still significantly underpriced compared to his role. I think he's probably, he belongs, you know, in that Dallas Goddard, TJ Hawkinson, high sixes range. So if I can get him about a thousand below value, that's great. The other player that I would pop in this lineup because there is uh, Justin Fields at the helm here is Cole Komet, who's been scoring touchdowns every week and they've kind of figured out a formula. So actually I just, I really want to mention that I love Schultz as well, but the better pairing here is probably Cole Komet. And this kind of allows me to not have to force a um, Chicago wide receiver into this lineup because we've already got Montgomery and Cole Komet. And by the way, Montgomery can catch a pass too. It is not out of the question for him to catch a touchdown from field. So as much as I'm not in love with that correlation, it's not the end of the world. Let's not go crazy, okay? Don't at me. Don't at me. I know you're going to at me, but don't at me. Um, all right. And reminder, by the way, if you like this kind of content, of course, make sure you're subscribed to the channel to get um, notified when any, whenever an, our videos come out, our showdown breakdowns, all the good stuff, Bobby Wow, tournament tactics, everything you do here on the DFS Army channel, make sure you hit that subscribe and notification bell. And of course, if you want to check out the FS Army, our tools, our discord, um, we teach the art of DFS and DFS Army. There is no other group that does what we do. We produce winners. And go look around the look around the industry, right? What do they show? They show their staffers winning. DFS Army, our members win, and that's the difference. Our tools built by built by players for players, right? We're all players. We use our tools that we've built, and everybody uses the same set of tools. That's why we kick ass and take names as a team. All right. So make sure you check out DFS Army. You can set up for VIP or NFL only, whatever you want. Promo code geek gets you 10% off over there. So make sure you check it out. And of course, we have a free offer plan over at DFS Army as well. Click on the free offer icon at the uh in the in the menu bar on the top of the on top of the website. And of course, you can see all these ways you get a free month of DFS Army. Check us out. Don't like it, don't stick around. You could leave. Free to go. Love it. Stick around, make some friends, make some money. Good times. Um, all right. Let's take a look at the wide receiver position. And starting at the top here, Stefan Diggs, a little pricey right now. Um, I think in this matchup where I don't think Buffalo is really going to have to uh, do a whole lot. Probably going to skip that scene. Um, Justin Jefferson, great spot, man. He had the catch of the century uh, last week. And we'll see if we can afford like a Justin Jefferson in our lineup. But of course, I really love him here. Cooper Cup out. Jamar Chase still out. Adams, brutal matchup. AJ Brown, okay, playable, but probably somebody I'll reserve for... Uh, stacks with Hertz because I am going to be playing Hertz quite a bit. Um, I like CeeDee Lamb a lot. He had such a good game last week. 15 targets, 11 receptions. Will he do it again? Maybe. I really, I'm, I'm just, I like the role right now, um, especially with Zeke Elliott kind of like gimpy or out for the team. They throw more. It looks like the old Dallas offense a little bit. So kind of want to be on that trend, um, assuming that Zeke Elliott hopefully will be out or, you know, in a play like, well, listen, I don't hope for him to be hurt, but I just wish Pollard got his chance. He looks good when he gets his opportunities. Anyway, um, CD Lamb, I'm going to plug him in here and see how much salary we have left when we do it. And we'll consider what we want to do with him. Um, 
couple other plays I really like. Of course, T. Higgins is in an elite spot. Pittsburgh just bleeding points to opposing wide receivers. Again, probably more somebody I might use with my Burrow stacks, but I want to keep him in mind. Uh, Terry McLaurin has had nothing but pretty good games with Taylor Heineke, and this is a great matchup, even if the opponent rank thingy is not showing it. Um, primarily, it's a great matchup. People just run against Houston, so the wide receivers don't need to do anything. But um, let's just pull up our Houston chart here just to kind of verify what I'm thinking. Yeah, they're just bleeding so many points to running back that you know no one bothers to attack them with wide receivers. So that is a concern. Cooper Cup. Uh, Amari Cooper, I mean, always decent, but never spent, never great. Gabriel Davis is okay uh, at that price. Chris Olave, eh. Pittman. Mm. Oh, look at Darius Slayton priced up. Look at him moving up in the world. Curtis Samuel, Brandon Cooks. So here we got D Darnell Mooney. And if I go with Mooney, I really probably can't go with Komet, but I do like the salary savings. So it's something to keep in mind, but I think I want to keep Komet in there. I really like Schultz, though. Hurts me. Um, but in the cheap zone, the guy I'm looking for, let's see if this is a main slate player. And we're kind of going through the whole list here, but there is one guy. No. I guess there is no Packers game on this slate. I was hoping for Christian Watson. I forgot. Couldn't remember if the Packers were on the slate. So... Uh, no Christian Watson cheat code, right? There's no Packers on the slate. No. Yeah. George Pickens is interesting at 6K, getting, you know, pretty much WR1 kind of numbers. Um, only four targets, though, this past week. Maybe I got to be careful with him. Donovan Peoples-Jones in a tough matchup. He's been a guy we've been all over. Paris Campbell, don't hate, but don't love this matchup. Uh, there's Drake London, an interesting bring back. An interesting bring back on this Fields lineup. You know, I don't normally like Drake London, especially on DraftKings where PPR and receptions and yardage are important. But the only thing that's really important on FanDuel are touchdowns. And at this price, you know, 6, 12, 18 fantasy points, that's going to be, you know, a touchdown and 100 yards. Or you know, five targets, 70 yards and a touchdown probably gets you there. It really it won't take much for him to get there. I like the correlative um, component of this, especially with Montgomery in this lineup where now I kind of am building around this Atlanta Chicago game. So yeah, I'm going to go with Drake London uh, in this lineup here. I think it works from a correlation standpoint and it negates a little bit of my negative correlation with Fields and Montgomery. I'm going to keep looking down the list just to see if there's any sort of lower cost running backs here that stand out or pop at first glance. But no, no, not seeing it. Oh, where is Gallup? Gallup is another one I really like. So um, there's one more. You know, I just want to keep Gallup in mind. Let's just do that, right? We're going to keep Gallup in mind. We can't play Gallup and Lamb in the same lineup. But notice what I'm doing here. I'm trying to target players from the high scoring games, the games that I think are going to produce above, they're going to exceed their projected sort of, uh, or have high projections in general. And when games have high totals, the players put up more fantasy points. We've got 7,800 per position group left. So I want to think about the flex and see if there's a running back we want to target. I usually like to target running backs on FanDuel in the flex. So let's take a look here and see if there's anybody that we really feel great about trying to pay up for. Saquon? I mean, if I put in Saquon here, and I do like him, but again, I don't think he could pay off this salary. It's more of a cash play. We'd really ha be forced to go with um, with a Gallup type in the last spot. I don't want to go there. So let's, let me look a little bit further. What if we go with Tony Pollard here? A little bit of doubling up from that game. Leaves me a set. You know who I really want? What I really want in my lineup is Justin Jefferson. So let's see what happens if I put Justin Jefferson in the flex. We got 6,500 in the time. In the, let's see what happens. 6,500 left. Jacoby, Devante, Devin Single, D Sizzles. Anyone else here? Yeah, no, this is it. 
this is it. So two versions of this lineup. Um, we can do a Singletary, Justin Jefferson version. And again, there's a lot of correlation going on here. Lamb, Jefferson, same game. We got Fields with Cole Komet and his running back, crazy. David Montgomery got a little silly with that one. We've got the bring back of Drake London, um, cheap defense in play. Yeah, I'm going to roll with this. I think that's a solid tournament lineup and need a couple of things to go right, but this uh, this could take one down. So that is your FanDuel first look for NFL Week 11. Remember, as always, that if you like what you're seeing, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. Don't make me say it again. If you want to check out, if you want to become a winner, you want to learn how to do DFS the right way, go to DFSArmy.com right now, DFSArmy.com. Get signed up. Use promo code GEEK. It'll give you 10% off. It locks in forever. $69.99. 69 bitch. It's the right price. Get VIP, Discord, Domination Station Optimizer, all of our tools, cheat sheets for every sport. You could play every DFS sport and win. MMA, NASCAR, we don't screw around. We're talking about niche sports. We got League of Legends going. Our League of Legends coach advantage just won the League of Legends championships with producing winners all the time so check out dfsarmy.com i will see you guys later in the week with the game plan and then of course the thursday night showdown breakdown good luck this week everybody